Hi, I'm Jim Doty, and welcome to Dialogue. We have on the show today Terry Horn, who's the president and publisher of the Orange County Register. He's been on the job three years. Media business uh, is really interesting, Christina. How do you get your news? Do you read it online or the old paper version? No, either uh, mostly on the radio or in the evenings I look at the computer. On the computer? Online. Yes, online. And you're yes. not getting as many ads as you do uh, the old no, uh, the print it's media. No, because we have so little time for anything anymore these days, um, I can just hit buttons and peruse you know, the top stories of the day real quickly and that's it. So the question, how do they pay for all that news when they're not getting it? So that's what we're, we're going to be exploring, out. Terry, today. Yes. And I know you're at the forefront of that transformation that's going on in the print media and the online media. Before that, Terry, you've been on the job here in Orange County uh, for about three years. Uh, what, what was the Terry Horn story before that? What's your background? Well, I didn't uh, start out wanting to run a newspaper. I just wanted to work at one. Uh, I came out of college about the time of uh, Watergate in the Midwest. I went to Wichita State University and got my master's at Oklahoma State University, both in uh, journalism and mass communication. Uh, wanted to change the world, wanted to make it a better place. And uh, oddly enough, uh, after a few years as a reporter, I was able to jump into the business side of this, uh, uh, of the business and uh, uh, find that I can have more impact that way, and it's been a joy. Uh, I think uh, I spent time in Kansas City, the Kansas City area for about seven years, three years in Chicago. I was publisher of the Charleston Daily Mail in Charleston, West Virginia. So. Uh, I've uh, been a COO of a couple of newspaper chains, uh, was most recently at the Arizona Republic in Phoenix uh, when uh, the Freedom uh, Company, Freedom Communications, which owns a register, uh, asked me to come join them. And what a great, uh, what a great place to live, Orange County. Yeah, and, uh, but a big, big challenge because uh, not just the Orange County Register, but all the print media is dealing with uh, a new era and, and competition it never had before. Uh, and uh, here you're dealing with a situation where you have a culture, a very strong culture. I'm sure reflecting what, what led you into the business for the first time, I, the, when you first were a journalist, and that is you want to change the world with the written word, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, it's interesting. We actually have more opportunity now. Uh, what we tell our associates at the register is that we're not a newspaper company anymore, we're a media company. Mm -hmm. Our job is to grow audiences and uh, whether you read the paper or our iPad uh, app or the iPhone, it really doesn't matter to us. It's a communication tool. It's, it's, a, it's a tool for you to get information. However you want to get the information, we're going to provide it to you, whatever platform that is. And we're going to grow as many audiences as we can, and then we're going to uh, share those audiences with businesses to help them prosper. And I imagine there's still a lot of people that still want to have the paper, just like I want to be holding a book at night to read. Yeah, I don't want to. Kids, you know, I don't, kids aren't going really? to be doing that. I yeah. guess you're right. Yeah. Okay, you're dating me. Oh, huh? like really? Me. We'll be maybe <laughs> okay, comfortable with this, so but can you imagine kids are playing com constant so computer games you're and they're right. in front of the computer, you're and right. that's those are your future customers. And when I look at the paper, you know, I can go in, into a section and here all of a sudden, but what about you, the you've got a whole section here <laughs> on ads, Sales. Yeah, and like they that. pay <laughs> the cost of all these journalists who are doing the work. This isn't here. How do you deal with that? Yeah, what happens? Well, we are growing it here. I uh -huh. mean, uh, I think our digital business uh, uh, was kind of in its infancy still when I arrived here three years ago. The register was a little behind in terms of both our uh, audience and our ability to monetize that audience. We had about 12 million page views a month, about a million unique users a month. And now, uh, uh, after three years, we've, we're bumping up against 50 million page views a month and four million uniques a month. But what when that, you said monetize, explain to our audience what yeah, you mean Yeah, that's by really, that. it's not that much significantly different than the print model in the sense that we still gather audiences by having information that they want and they'll come to, and then we, take those eyeballs and serve them up with ads to advertisers and they get that benefit. Uh, it's, uh, uh, the business is a little slow in terms of uh, getting the same value for the eyeball in online as in print and that's why uh, what seemed like a convulsion in the uh, print industry occurred the last three or four years is it made that transformation. 
uh, at the register, we've been very focused on not worrying about where the audience wants to be. We want to be where the audience wants to be. Rather than being hung up about everybody being in print, let's develop all these platforms and be there when people want to get the information. So are you growing it then? Yes. The I number mean, of users? Yeah. Uh, for example, we, we, uh, we've had a, a mobile mm -hmm. website uh, for about three years, but we uh, added a mobile, mobile apps for smartphones this spring, or this, this, uh, in the last six months. Uh, within six months, we went from 3% of our digital page views uh, on mobile to 10%. We think we'll be 25% of all our page views within another six months. Within a year, uh, we wouldn't be shocked to see 40 to 50% of our page views on mobile. Again, uh, we built all these websites. It would have been easier just to say, we want people to stay on our websites. That that's where people are going, so we had to get there and uh, be there for them. Will there be an incentive for advertisers to uh, rather advertise on a, uh, online, on a, on a computer, or on an iPad rather than, than the print version? I think people, uh, when, when they make their advertising decisions, are, are making that based on where they can reach the key audience, target audience as they want, and that will determine which platform, which product. Uh, the print register, uh, the 45 and above audience uh, that we have, that's our core audience and so we're very the solid there. Call, you'll still be looking for the coupon in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, uh, and our kids are going to be clipper. here. <laughs> yeah, but talking have, about coupon clippers here, you have a new business on, you know, the, the, they sold uh, to Google recently, a uh, clip-on? Groupon. A, yeah. yeah. What is it? Groupon, Groupon. It's, uh, they, they do Groupon. Uh, coupons basically online. We have something similar called Deal of the Day. A lot of newspaper companies uh, uh, began to add those to their websites, and it's become a significant business for us also. These are Groupon are young really? college kids doing this at college. It started as a pizza business uh, that they decided that they could buy pizzas and distribute them more, more quickly oh online. Gosh. Anyway, it, it, they sold it recently to Google for a multi-billion dollar deal. Yeah. So it, it just shows the change that's going on. Terry, uh, you know, in the CEO circles, there's a buzz that you've been really effective as a leader in terms of uh, uh, changing uh, the, 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 the culture of a company to uh, adapt to this changing time. Could you talk about that? How do you bring a, a people uh, uh, in your community uh, along uh, and adopt change? Because I think there's a tendency to stick with the status quo uh, and, and not really be cognizant of the financial realities and the market pressures that are being faced by the CEO and senior officers. So how do you bring an institution, the people that are part of the company along, uh, and deal and, 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 and not only uh, accept but embrace change? Yeah, when I came to the register uh, in September of 07, uh, the recession hadn't quite started, I think officially started in December, and there was tremendous change in uh, that newspapers were losing a lot of their classified revenue due to Craigslist and other uh, what I call disruptive innovations. And the, and the traditional media was slow to react. So at the very first meetings that I held with employees, uh, their associates at the register, we focused on what was going to happen if we didn't, you know, if we didn't recognize the change and adapt to it. And obviously, uh, businesses don't exist if they don't were adapt. The managers? No, this, uh, these were employee meetings. Uh, I, you I brought the whole group together. Many, many times, yeah. many, many times. And we, we talked about how change was, what was going to happen. I had a little presentation called The Perfect Storm that talked about all the reasons that the industry was beginning to experience problems and what we thought was around the corner, many of those things came to fruition, and that we needed to change and, and plan for that. And uh, that's when we first started talking about, instead of being a product company, where we had a newspaper, or in the Register's case, we have 24 weekly newspapers too, we had to become an audience company. We had to worry about gathering audiences rather than selling products. We were really selling audiences. And as we uh, talked about that, uh, over and over, our associates began to understand we never sold products, we always sold audiences. So we began to look at our business different, and I think that was one of the f big first steps for us. And we continue uh, to try to focus on content, to get audience, and then selling that audience to the right 
uh, customer that will benefit from that audience seeing their ads. You must have done something right because often when you talk about change and drastic change in the future, people become fearful and when they're fearful they're not as creative or they're not focused because they start thinking about how can I take care of myself. Um, but you got them to to stay focused. And you know, we did that really through a process I'd used in other uh, companies that uh, where I'd faced similar uh, challenges, and that's to involve people. Uh, we had what we call uh, uh, transformation teams, and these are teams that really made decisions. We would take cross-department uh, uh, groups of people, tell them the problem, uh, give them parameters to work within, and they would go off and solve the problem, come back. I would approve it, and then instead of handing it over to senior management to implement, those teams implemented it. And uh, I think uh, we've probably had at least two dozen teams over the last three years that basically have taken these challenges one at a time. And uh, you know, the, our group of associates are some of the brightest in our industry. And we just basically unleashed the people that we, we have working for us, as opposed to uh, eight or ten executives sitting in a corner trying to figure it out, because we could never have figured it out. But I feel like the registers uh, on the right track, and I think a lot of newspapers are doing better than people think. Uh, as far as I know, the only major newspapers in the country to go out of business during this time of great crisis in the industry and this awful recession have been in two newspaper towns, where there were, you know, um, in Denver or even Tucson or Seattle. Uh, it, there, there are no newspaper or no cities without newspapers uh, that had newspapers a few years ago. But while they haven't gone out of business, I would venture to guess, not being privy to the statistics, that the number of people employed by the survive, well, all of the newspapers, few of them going under, but those that are around are probably employing 25, 30 percent fewer people. Absolutely, but uh, a lot of industries are in this recession. Yeah. It's hard to identify how much of that is the transition of media and how much of that is the economy. It's both, uh, but uh, uh, I think our business has changed forever, and uh, the truth is it has to continually change. Let me ask you this on the iPad. I know this is true for advertisers in Google something that they can't really do on, in, in the print media unless they're, they're, they're asked to uh, clip a coupon and then they can find out how many people are using it. Can, can an advertiser on the online version uh, get a read as to how many clicks or how many hits so they can see how uh, advantageous that particular ad was? Sure, I mean, there's all kinds of metrics uh, uh, we, we uh, measure for the advertiser. They, they know how many people saw the ad and how many uh, click through. Uh, they know how many leads they got from it. Can they actually order, let's say, is, is your online version um, reached a state where you can hit it and, and actually order the product? You know, uh, we actually are working uh, on the concept of e-commerce. Uh, we'd like next year uh, uh, for the uh, uh, local retailers to be able to use the, uh, our products to do e-commerce in concert with their online ads, mobile ads, print ads, whatever. Uh, so that's it's not something we do like now. Almost like a mini Amazon exactly. where you're not inventorying the goods but you're the middle person. Exactly. One of the big changes we made right after I arrived at the register was going web first and what that meant is we used to have a uh, 250 people or so sitting in a corner uh, putting out a newspaper every day and then a dozen geeks over here would turn it uh, into a website once a day. And we flipped that and told everybody they were working for the web. Everything they did was going to the web first and then uh, a dozen old guys over in a corner would uh, turn it into a newspaper once a day. So we completely flipped the model. Uh, and I think that, uh, uh, you know, it's really positioned us uh, as a go-to source when something is breaking or happening. Uh, when we've had the fires, we've that had... That was a smart move. Yeah, when we've had the fires, we've had enormous spikes in traffic uh, on the website because we have reporters in the field that instantaneously can file their stories. We have photographers and videographers that are filming and instantly posting it on the web. So uh, it's, it's uh, I think, our, our trusted brand and that ability to be immediate has been very important for us. With the downsizing, downsizing Terry, will there be... Uh, uh, risk that we're going to be losing 
the investigative journalism, the infrastructure that in a large way I think the public depends upon the media to, to be a watchdog. Are we losing that? Well, I think it's uh, at risk. At, uh, when I came to the register, it already had a long uh, tradition of watchdog journalism, investigative journalism. And uh, to reinforce that, I told the news department that uh, their job, one of their main jobs, is to afflict the powerful when they abuse power and to comfort the weak when they've been abused by the powerful. So I've tried to uh, encourage them to be aggressive. And uh, I, th I think that we've been able to continue with that tradition. Part of the reason we've been able to continue is we've been smart in the way we've transformed our business. So we still have 230 people in our news gathering organization. We still have the financial wherewithal. We're a profitable business to be able to invest in investigative reporting. I hear about some other major newspapers around the country that have half the staff that we have or even less. I hear about mid-sized newspapers even here in Southern California with just a fraction of that staff and they're just struggling to get out the basic news and not doing that. Uh, I think we'll be a poor society if there are not strong institutions, strong enough to stand up to powerful forces uh, uh, and, and be able to tell the truth. On the same subject, really a related subject perhaps, what about the fact that uh, uh, people now in this, is, in this new era no longer have just one or two or maybe three newspapers in a town to go to, but can go to the Huffington or whatever, the, whatever it is online that might be more uh, sympathetic to their point of view. We know newspapers have an editorial page with a bias, but the rest of the paper, the reporting is intended not to, to be, be biased, unbiased. unbiased. But, but if, if individuals have a particular bias, they may be more comfortable not reading the Register or the LA Times or the New York Times, but something out there on the web, a blog perhaps, that is spoon feeding what they want to hear. Yeah, I think that's one of the unfortunate aspects of, uh, that's developed from the internet, is people are able to go to sources that basically tell them what they want to hear. I would rather have people even read the LA Times uh, than the Register if it means that they're only going to get one point of view. I want everyone, I think we're a better society, we work best when there's lots of points of views that people are exposed to. The, the traditional business model of newspapers expose people to a lot of different views, a lot of different information, a lot of things. I mean, I always know during an election that we're, we're doing it right when I'm called up and said, why are you favoring Obama? And the next phone call is, why are you favoring McCain? And I got that. And, yeah. uh, but when people are only looking for one point of view, I think it weakens our society. And uh, uh, I, I worry about that more than I worry about newspapers being able to figure out how to transform into media companies uh, because I think we're well on our way to doing that. It absolutely does weaken you. I mean, the more information you get, I mean, you keep an open mind and get all of the information, and then you'll make the you know the most educational oh, no, decision. Maybe change your mind. And maybe you know, it, yeah, God, lo and behold. My, yes. my goodness, I hope I hope that's a, the a case, possibility yes. in the future. You know, Terry, uh, you're you're now recognized as one of the uh, nationally prominent uh, leaders in the media business, a visionary. And you started out as a journalist, and when you mentioned earlier that when you did this and be, got into administration, that wasn't your intent, but, but you had a knack for it and an interest in it, it reminded me that I was a professor and I was teaching classes and I loved doing it, and then inevitably I got sucked into administration. How does, I'm, you know, and now you're, you're a prominent leader, a uh, national leader in the business in terms of adapting to change and so on. How does that transformation in a person uh, take place career-wise? What well, was it in your own career that you think uh, gave you the kinds of insights that changed your, your view, so to speak, from I want to cover a story to managing people and being a leader and bringing about change? Probably not too different from yourself and that I saw a lot of things going on that I thought weren't done well and could be better and when I was given a little bit of opportunity to do that I seized it and uh, continued to seize it and you know nothing makes me more proud than to pick up any of our products whether that's a paper or to go to our website and uh, see something really important 
and know that in some small way I helped it happen. I didn't get to write the story. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't even get to edit it. Uh, but I know that uh, because of the things we're doing, we're allowing journalism to continue to prosper. So what's your next big challenge with the register or your big fear? Well, I think uh, the, the growth of mobile, uh, uh, both on smartphones and uh, uh, the tablets, whether that's iPad or one of the many others, uh, I think people are going to move quickly from what we continue uh, consider traditional websites to these kind of uh, platforms. And we've done very well in, in monetizing and figuring out the websites and how to, how to uh, draw audiences and make money there. Now we've got to really figure this out. And this is happening so quick, the shift of the audience, uh, that it's going to be a big challenge for us to get ahead of that curve. And I think all, all uh, uh, of media is, is faced with that same challenge. We're no different from anyone Do else. Do reporters write differently for uh, tablet versus uh, uh, paper? It's, it's so early, it's hard to say. We, we, uh, this is uh, the, the, the Orange County Register app that's uh, out now is 1.0. Of course, the tablet just came out a while back. Uh, and a 1.5 is coming out uh, uh, soon, and then a 2.0 and so on. We're going to continue to, to uh, see where it takes us. But it's going to be uh, different from the print experience or the web experience. It's a lot more interactive. Uh, and I think you're going to see, we've just hired television producers at the register uh, to work on our iPad uh, development. Uh, so you'll see a lot more video and a lot more creative uh, uh, approach with that. It'll be interesting uh, in the next uh, few months to see how that occurs throughout uh, the industry. I think USA Today, Wall Street Journal both have excellent apps, but I don't think they're the end app yet. So you could have uh, your you could subcontract contractors d reporters that never actually come into an office. They just have their little camera, um, go do the latest story somewhere and download it instantaneously. Yeah, well, they're not covering much in the office. So the more they're out in the community, the more they're out doing, uh, and the more we can enable them <clears throat> to do that with technology, mm -hmm. the better served our our audiences are. Uh, this all sounds very encouraging. Uh, what are the threats? What are the things that keep you up at night? Well, uh, the disruptive innovation that you can't see until it's too late. Uh, I mean, uh, I think uh, the register had uh, 20 plus million dollars of recruitment advertising when uh, there was uh, Craigslist came along with free recruitment. Mm -hmm. Now in uh, Southern California, there's more than 150 free job boards, uh, uh, most of them segmented by different uh, uh, business uh, business uh, interests or, int or uh, industries, but they're not as effective uh, still or we wouldn't continue to have recruitment advertising, but there was a big change there. There'll be other disruptive things that happen as people continue to look on how digital solutions can better serve the market. And every time those will win out and we have to be part of that revolution as they opposed to victims of it. Yes, yeah, so we're trying to look around the corner and see what's next and see if we can get there early or at the same time. Right. How do you like Orange County? How, uh, the, is, How been, can you, you not like Orange you've been, County? You've been all over the country, <laughs> especially in the Midwest, uh, prior to uh, this responsibility. Uh, give us uh, the insight of a, at least a three-year-old member of, of our community. What's different yeah. about it in terms of how it affects your business? Well, it's a great place to do business. Uh, California's challenge sometimes maybe. be uh, uh, from per some perspectives to do business, but Orange County is very prosperous. Uh, it's upbeat, uh, people are optimistic, and it's easier to do business in a place where people are optimistic and believe in the future. And Orange County definitely uh, 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 believes in its future. Uh, my wife and children love it here. Uh, I think uh, it'd be very difficult for me to live uh, anywhere else. They, uh, they are uh, very much in love with Orange County just as I am. You know, I, I'm sure if I had asked uh, uh, Chris Anderson, uh, 10 years ago, who's your competition? I'm guessing he would have said television, radio, and the LA Times. Right. Here we are 10 years later, who is your competition? Well, the LA Times much less. Uh, certainly Google, Yahoo, ESPN LA, uh, those are big competitors for us uh, as we compete for eyeballs and interests. So, uh, I'm looking at a different set of competitors, 
Uh, it's not unusual for one of our sales reps to be in a business and walk out and there's a Google rep and a Yahoo rep waiting to go in also. Oddly enough, we also partner with Yahoo and Google. We sell some of Yahoo's uh, uh, unused inventory to our customers to help uh, along with our online buys to extend uh, uh, behavioral targeted uh, audiences. And we also have a partnership with Google. So uh, we're competing and we're partnering. Well, we're out of time, Terry, but let me say that uh, uh, I feel reassured that a venerable institution like the Orange County Register is in very capable hands, and we wish you the best of luck and hope you'll be back on the show And uh, because it's, things are changing so rapidly to get an update on what's going on. Uh, thank you.